Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to Friday. Um, it's great to be with you. Uh, I'm here in Leiden. Leiden is in the Netherlands. Um, it's going to be an art show tomorrow. So looking forward to that, seeing a lot of friends. Um, just came in from South Africa this morning. Uh, plane travel is just uh, fantastic and a miracle. It's a miracle to be just be able to move one continent to another continent in a matter of hours. So pretty fantastic. It's great being with you. Today we have a wonderful artist. We have Heather Martin. Heather's going to be showing us gouache. Mm -hmm. Heather's from right now. She's in uh, Northern California, a place mm -hmm. I spent uh, five years going to college in. So nice, nice area. Mm -hmm. So Heather, welcome. Thank you. Hi. Nice to meet everyone. So Heather will be showing us gouache. Um, she said you can ask her questions um, as she's progressing through her paintings. That's fine. Um, on Facebook, please ask questions. And Anna Marie and Gabriel and Matiza and Giovanni and others will bring your questions over to Heather. And as always, if you're on Zoom, you'll be able to ask your questions directly. So um, by all means, please just do so. Heather, welcome. Would you want to tell us a, a little bit about yourself? Uh, thank you. So here. I'm really pleased to be here, really excited. I am an artist in Northern California. I do a lot of plein air painting, a lot of still life. Most of my work is painted directly from life, but today for the demo, I'm going to be working from a photo. So it's a little bit different. Um, I've been doing fine art since 2000 and well, officially fine art full time since 2018, but I just got back into traditional media in 2016. I worked about a decade in the gaming industry doing uh, like game art and illustration. So yeah, that's that's pretty much my story. Awesome. Awesome. So Ethel, are we gonna be able to see some images of Heather's okay. work? Yes, we'll do a quick uh, PowerPoint uh, slide. And Heather, maybe you can tell us about what we're looking at. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, quickly, Heather would like our guests, our friends to connect with you even after the show. So Heather is in, is in Instagram and very active. If you get daily, <laughs> almost daily dose of inspiration, go follow her. That's her account, Heather in Art. I just love how it sounds. And, it, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, she's also in Facebook. Easy to remember, mm -hmm. that's basically her name, the full name. Mm -hmm. And as mentioned earlier, Heather, the next couple of slides are sample artworks and we, we would be happy to hear a line or two for each of these. Beginning. Okay. Mm. All right. So these are lemons with honey and ginger. I think I was sick at the time and thinking of some kind of herbal remedy. But uh, anyone that's known my work knows that I paint a ton of lemons, which is what we're doing today, actually, because I have three lemon trees. So this is just one of those things. And next. <laughs> <laughs> Again, with the lemons. This is one of my trees uh, looking out through the leaves. And I just love finding patterns in nature. I love, I'm lately on this rose kick because you can find all these designs within everything that's right in front of you. So it's, it's kind of a fun challenge. And my so these are the roses at a rose garden in Walnut Creek. It's a it's actually called Heather Heather Farm Park. The gardens at Heather Farm Park. So no, they're not my gardens, but I wish. <laughs> my cats are clawing at the carpet. Oh, this is in Michigan. My mom has a beautiful property up in rural Michigan, and this is their little rowboat with a bunch of wildflowers around it and lily pads. That one was a 18 by 24, so pretty big. This one was from a plein air event in Morgan Hill, California, and it won first place. I remember doing this like right at the end of the day, the light was changing really quickly and it was fun watching and painting all the diners. 
This was one that I did with a student, my first and only one-on-one -on -one student experience. It was really fun and I got to show her kind of my process and I loved these colors especially. All right, that's the last artwork that we're gonna share. Back to you, oh, Those are very, very nice. Thank you. So, so Heather's going to um, paint for us today. Please go ahead and ask questions if you have them. I want to give you as much time as possible, Heather. So anytime you'd like to start would be great. Okay. I am going to switch it over to share my screen. Let's do this. Okay. So feel free to ask me questions as you go along. And like I said, I usually work from life. So it's it's a little bit different working from a photo. I prefer working from life because you can see more of a dimension. You can see the lighting a little better, the colors better. And I like the challenge of the light changing slightly. It gives a little more life to it, but we're gonna try our best. So I actually have on here, it's very lightly drawn with this um, blue pencil. And it's a non-photo blue, so that's why you can't really see it on the paper, but it allows um, me to paint on top and you won't see the lines coming through. So that's why I use that. I have all my colors laid out. These are um, all Daniel Smith, which I'm really excited about. And I like to use my spray bottle. I spray them down regularly. I think one of the biggest mistakes that new gouache users do is that they don't put enough paint on their palette and they're really stingy with their paint. I like to go, you know, fill the wells as much as possible. And this allows you to really pile on the paint. Using the spray bottle keeps it nice and wet and a good like liquid consistency. They say maybe like a pancake batter consistency is really the ideal, um, my palette. This is from Michaels, nothing too fancy, but I have another one that I buy called the Mijello palette on Amazon. So it's airtight, but if you don't paint regularly, I paint almost a couple times a week, I would say, but if you don't, then you might get some dried up paint and mold. So there's other palette styles. I encourage everyone to kind of do some research and find something that fits your needs specifically. Heather, okay. There's a question sent direct to admin, to me. Uh, this, is in, this is from BJ. So he asks, is that pencil that you're using also effective for watercolor? I would say so. Um, gouache is basically opaque watercolor. So, I think it would be very similar. Thank you. I don't really know. <laughs> I don't do transparent watercolor, so I can't say with full confidence, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, I want to show you my brushes real quick. These are mostly flats. I prefer the longer flats, especially because they have a little more flexibility to them. These are all golden Taclon, uh, a synthetic hair which I really like. They're nice and bouncy. And these brushes last forever. Like you can see the paints literally peeling off the handle. I've had this for years and it's still in really great condition. So that's what I have. I do have one small round that I like to use for like uh, fine details or maybe a signature, but I don't use them that often. All right, let's dive into it. For the colors, I, I have a couple in here that I don't usually use just because I like to experiment and try things out. But in general, I have a cool and a warm of each of the primaries. So um, these are the most important that you would have uh, lemon yellow, some kind of deep or medium yellow, a quinacridone magenta is my preferred cool red with some kind of maybe, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, pyrrole red? Pyrrole. Pyrrole. 
and then uh, ultramarine blue and i usually have a um, thalo but this is cobalt which i also really like and then i like to have some earth colors on hand just for plain air events or plain air and i like to stretch a long strip of white a tip that i got watching one of nathan Fox's uh, demos which is really useful because you always have a little bit of clean white and you can kind of move along it as you go. So we're just gonna start. And to begin with, with gouache, um, I always try to get the really bright and saturated colors down early on. And I like to start with a very watery consistency because this is just the block in. I'm not super sure. I wanna get the placement of everything down. And there's my cat screaming on cue. <laughs> We're just gonna pretend we can't hear that. And then I'm gonna also get this. You can be messy. You see I have lots of drips and everything. The glare on this. It's a little bit much. There we go. Light. All right. So we're getting our bright colors down. And I even see some of this orange down in the shadow here. Um, I like to cover all of the white of the paper pretty immediately. So I'm even going to take this really watered down yellow and go over all the white of the table. And this is where the light is hitting, so I want it to feel nice and warm. I'm using it extra watered down though, because I will paint on top of it. And then if you want it to be even less obvious, you can take a paper towel and kind of blot it out. So what we're doing is we're basically just sorting out the lights and shadows. I'm gonna get some of the lights of this leaf here. I love these greens. I don't usually use um, artificial greens, but I like these ones from Daniel Smith. This is the spring green, and I forget the the names of the other ones, but I always try to mix a little bit of another color with it so it's not just pure, pure green. And we have a little bit of light over here. So again, my hands get usually pretty dirty. I should probably be wearing gloves. So we have all of our lights kind of blocked in. Now I'm gonna mix up some of the shadow. I don't mind mixing a little bit of this yellow in here. I think every color has a little bit of all the primaries. So um, I tend to not be too picky about super clean colors. But it's still very watery. You're going to splash stuff everywhere. But the nice thing about gouache is that it does wash out very easily. So you can be a really messy painter. That was one of the appeals for me because I'm such a messy painter. Sorry, the glare is a little much. Let me see. Is that better? Yes, or too dark? Okay, might be a little dark, but let me know and I, I can always change it. So I'm coming down here. I'm gonna actually use this blue. I use a lot of ultramarine blue, but I'm gonna go over all the shadows on these leaves back here. Get this shadow down here.
And then we can kind of get the shadow here. Like I said, I use ultramarine blue a lot. It's always the color that I go through the fastest. I would say ultramarine and lemon yellow are the two that I just blow through. Heather, what paper are you using? I'm using uh, Arches Cold Press 8 by 10. So there we go. We can get some of this shadow down here using a little bit of this cobalt blue. And did you spray the paper before you started? Because I know you, I think you were spraying the paints. I was spraying the paint. I don't spray the paper, actually. I was just doing the paint. Um, I tend to use it pretty bone dry. Cats gonna make a lot of noise. Okay. So let's get in some of this. Uh, I'm gonna say orange, but it's actually a lemon that's in the back. They look like oranges though. And I'm all about value. So I think value is super important, more important than color, although I love color. There we go. And then we have this, when I designed this, I wanted this middle shape to be a little bit in shadow coming out into the light and this to be fully in light. It took me forever to come up with this very simple still life. So this is a little bit darker. And you can kind of soften edges by wetting a clean brush and then just dabbing it like that. Or sometimes I use my finger, um, whatever you're comfortable with. So when I paint, you know how in oils, a lot of people work from dark to light. With gouache, I tend to do uh, kind of working towards the middle. I do the lightest and the darkest and or more like the middle ground and then work my way to the stronger values. And I've been doing everything with this one inch flat. Okay. And like I said, I don't like to have white of the paper, so I'm going to tone this down a little bit. And even this segment, even though it was very saturated and very light, it is uh, darker. So one way you can find values is you can squint. I'm always squinting at my paper to where I have like all these dark lines in my face <laughs> because I'm just constantly squinting. I just realized my face is really dark in the camera. <laughs> okay. So I pretty much have all the white of the paper covered. And right now the paint is still a little bit wet. So I'm going to move down to a smaller brush. If your palette's really messy like this, and you want to clean it real quick, I usually give it a spray. And then I just 
wipe it clean with a paper towel. So what I'm gonna do now is I wanna get my darkest darks in pretty early on. Mixing a little ultramarine with some orange. And then I'm looking a little more blue probably. This is the darkest shape to me, right underneath this orange or <laughs> lemon. I want to water it down just a little bit more. But now that we have everything laid down here, we can use thicker paint. We're more certain on where everything's going to go. And then back here, we have some of these darker shapes. My drawing isn't super accurate. I sketched it in right before the demo, but I'm not too picky about having it be perfect. That's why, especially with these organic shapes, you don't need to stress out too much about exact drawing. Hi, Heather, this is Anna Marie, and mm -hmm. I have a question for Facebook for you. Mm -hmm. We have Marcy asking, do you ever wait for the paint to dry? Are you painting with everything wet for the sake of time? Thank um, you. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes after the blocking stage, like how I just had, I will set it out in the sun and let it kind of dry a little bit. But yeah, I'm hoping to finish this demo in one go, even though I know it's a pretty tight schedule, but I don't think it's super necessary to let it dry. It depends on the subject. If it has a lot of detail, maybe if it's a building and I want to really not get a bunch of fuzzy lines, I will let it kind of sit out a little bit. So this leaf up in the foreground is getting some light through it on the other side. So it's a little bit warmer. You can always compare to other parts of the painting. So once you get your darkest darks and lightest lights, you can kind of compare everything to that. That makes sense. And this, I love these leaf shapes. All right. So I'm going to get some of these shadows, try to define this a little more. So right underneath this leaf, you get some of this light, this greenish warm light coming through. And I love finding these subtleties, especially uh, when I'm painting directly from life. It's kind of why I paint directly from life is I love to study and observe these little details. Down here, the shadow is almost, um, almost orange, which is kind of interesting. Same with over here. Another problem a lot of people have is they don't clean their brushes well enough. Like they'll swish it around in the water, but what you really wanna do is kind of like tap it down and make sure to really get the pigment out of the center of the brush. It can be frustrating if you're painting and then you get a big streak of something that was deep inside those hairs. Okay, so now that I have that, I want to find my lightest lights and block those in pretty quick. So I use some of this white 
and the consistency is thicker as you can see it's almost pure paint i'm going to do just a hair of this lemon yellow to give it a little bit of warmth i know you can't really see it on the the screen and then i'm gonna hopefully this is dry because you don't want it to blend but i'm gonna just kind of block in these top parts Again, you can use your finger to soften an edge if it's too hard. And then we get a little bit of light on this one. I have a question. Mm -hmm. What do you find rewarding about working in gouache? Huh, that's a good question. Um, what do I find rewarding? I love the the colors. I, the colors of gouache in particular are very bright and saturated. And it's very pleasing to look at. And how it dries a matte color um, just looks really nice. Very bright. I don't know if that made sense. I'm gonna do a little bit. I agree. It has like here. a dreamy, like quality to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just with the kind of like the matte finish, mm -hmm. but then yeah, like the intense color. Yeah, exactly. Do you have some favorite subjects that you like to paint? Um. Yes, I love to paint lemons and fruit and flowers. Um, when I'm out doing plein air, I love to paint a lot of trees, especially eucalyptus. Eucalyptus are my favorite to paint. They have such interesting colors. I'm really finding these darker reds right underneath where it meets. I'm going to soften that a bit. I normally paint while I'm standing, so it's a little bit different today as well that I'm sitting down <clears throat> and looking at the paper. It's not my preferred way to do it because I usually get a lot of neck tension from looking down like this, but sacrifices must be made. On Facebook, you have a comment. Marguerite, this says, you have inspired me to try this. Oh, yes. Awesome. Hope you enjoy it. It can be a little bit tricky, uh, especially if you're used to using other mediums. Like a lot of oil painters get frustrated at how dry or how quick it dries. And that was my definitely my first complaint when I started using it because I used to just do oils. But once you get used to it and you get comfortable with, you know, reactivating the paint and moving things around, it's a lot of fun. So one thing that's really important that I think a lot of people don't do is to really think before you paint about what you love about this piece. Find the one element that really stands out to you. And for me, it's the, <laughs> sorry, cat food. Um, for me, it's the, the light coming through and the way these warm, bright lights are just shining through these areas. So I wanna make sure to get these parts before anything else. We have another question on Facebook from Marcy asking, so what is the advantage of gouache over oil? Thank you. With, yeah, with gouache, 
it dries quickly and you can get a lot of detail. So I like using gouache if there's um, maybe some subject that has a lot going on that I want to get down really quickly. Um, and it's also really easy to clean and portable. So I could bring this into like a fancy restaurant and, you know, it, it still works. So it's very handy. But you also get really vibrant colors, like I said earlier. So um, that's also nice. I use it a lot for a lot of floral pieces, uh, colors with or scenes with a lot of energy that maybe oils wouldn't be as strong at capturing. But it's all personal, obviously. Can you say again what paper you're using? I'm using an Arches cold press that you can see here. It's a 140 pound. There's glue along all the edges, as a lot of you probably know, but I reinforce it with some tape because the glue tends to be really thin and the blocks fall apart. So that's why it's all taped up like that. Oops, <laughs> oh my God. I just dipped the end of my brush or paint. Heather, we have a question about uh, how do you like to frame your gouache paintings? I, that's maybe one of the biggest downsides to me is that I prefer to have mine under glass. You can varnish them. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how because I don't do it enough to really know, but I prefer the look of it under glass. And in order to make it really nice, you get the glare free museum grade glass, which is pretty pricey. But um, I've also worked on board and varnished them and it looks really nice, very similar to oil that way. But again, I don't like to make recommendations because I don't really know what I'm doing yet in that regard. You typically freehand your uh, sketch for your painting? I do. So I use, in a lot of my videos online, you'll see me use this little gray thing, which is a, um, sorry, here. This is a view catcher and you can find different ratios. So eight by 10, 12 by 16. Um, and then it has this little hole in here so you can find colors pretty accurately that I never use. But this is really handy. I kind of imagine a fake grid to find the center and then draw from there but everything is kind of just guessed guesstimated i am totally an Any advocate slide. sorry go ahead sorry go ahead oh uh, i'm just an advocate of um being a little more free, having a little, like some quirks in your painting. I don't need my drawing to be perfect. And I don't think anyone should feel pressured to have a perfect drawing either. Some wiggly lines are charming in my opinion. There's a question about casing. Um, have you painted with casing and if you have, uh, can you compare that to the vice versa with gouache? I have. Uh, I really liked it. The problem with casein for me is that it's difficult to wash. It's difficult to clean because it will dry. You can't reactivate it once it's fully dried. So it's a lot like acrylic in that matter. And I find that it's really hard on my brushes 
Um, some of the pigments that I used with casein have been extra difficult to get out of my brushes. So I just am a little bit frustrated with the cleaning process, which is why I use gouache in the first place. But it is beautiful. And when you use it, it does kind of have a feeling of an oil paint consistency a little more. It's a little bit thicker. Uh, the colors don't change as much when you, it dries. But those benefits are not enough for me. Thanks. Again, it's all about the value, so darkening this area. When you have really bright subjects like this, you want to really focus on the colors around it as well. So to make this stand out, I want to really push back everything else. Another question for you, Heather, from BJ. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you tried painting watercolor and gouache, of course, on Yupo? I have not, I don't think. I may have like a really long time ago when I was experimenting with what I like and don't like, but I don't quite remember. I, I feel like I wouldn't like it though because I want it to absorb the paint. I don't like when things are kind of floating on top and, and pushing the paint around. I want it to kind of absorb and sink in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This leaf has a little bit of light on top. I know we talked before we went live, but could you share uh, what you told me about uh, using the watercolor ground? Oh yeah. Um, oh, I don't know what I what I told you, but I have used watercolor ground, and it's really nice. Um, it can really look like an oil painting, especially when you wax it or varnish it after, and you can put it on pretty much any surface. So I have tried it on really big paintings and found it a little bit difficult to go really big. So I'd stick with something smaller if you're using the watercolor grounds. But I haven't experimented with it enough to really know or be able to tell you uh, how to use it. So do you prefer a surface that has texture versus smooth? Yes, I would say, I would say so. I really just like the um, cold press texture a lot. I'm gonna add this seed in here. And there was a question about the last color on the very right corner. Is that black? This is uh, the lamp black. Yeah. Awesome. And I so you were am... able to fit. Uh... Go ahead. You were able to fit most of the Daniel Smith colors on this palette that you got. I can fit a lot of them. There's still quite a few that I didn't get on here, but I think I, I fit most of them. Some of them I do doubles just because I'm playing around and I can accurately pick out the ones. So with these larger sizes over here, I put in like two yellows and I tried some of the, um, what is it? Lilac and Wisteria and this one. 
I really like these colors, by the way. What's yeah. the um, orange in the lower left corner? This orange is the, what is it? So another thing is I like to separate all my paint into colors. So it helps me find things pretty quickly. This is the, uh, Pyrrol, or is that how you say it? Pyrrol, orange? Pyrrol, yeah. It's a really nice orange, by the way. I think orange is one of those colors that should be in everyone's palette. I use it a lot. Heather, if you were to add another color to your palette that you do not yet have, uh, what color would you choose? That I don't have. <laughs> hmm. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe, are we talking about the Daniel Smith line specifically or just like made up like out of the blue? Um, straight from your imagination. Straight from my no limitations. Uh, gosh, I don't know. I feel like I, I have everything that I need. Um, that's a really tough one. I don't think I have a good answer for that. Maybe another green. So my favorite greens are these really bright. Um, greens that are shining through leaves, backlit leaves. And that's a hard color to find. So I'd probably say that. I'm always squinting. I'm always looking at my painting and squinting. Kind of trying to find how light to go. How often do you use black with gouache? I use black quite a bit with gouache. Um, I know a lot of people don't like using black because it can, you know, muddy up things quite a bit. But I think with gouache in particular, it's very useful because it's hard to get really dark values in gouache. So I use it quite a bit. Oops, um, as I go straight for it. So I wanna get a little more of this background. Ethel, is the, uh, this is Barbara. Is there, a, um, being lazy, not looking, but is there a neutral tint in gouache? Uh, is that to me? I don't, I don't. No, I mean, I, I was asking ones. Ethel. Oh, sorry. Because she, I figured she, you know, the uh, she she knows the whole. Mm -hmm. she's yeah, the expert on everything. Not not NARS. Okay. It'll be coming out. Okay. Well, hi, John. Hi. <laughs> so I'm pushing back, and you can see how just pushing, making this a little bit darker in the background really brings out the brightness of the front lemons. That's why values are key, really important. Do, does gouache dry lighter like, um, um, uh, watercolor does? You know, usually you kind of, it dries lighter and you have to kind of, plan for that? I don't know. Um, with gouache, since it's a matte medium, <clears throat> it will dry lighter in some cases. So if you're using a plain black, it's going to dry a little bit lighter than what you're seeing here. Just because, you know, as it dries into this matte finish, you're going to catch a lot of light. But it also will dry. It tends to dry a little bit darker in some cases. So like the pure white will look a little bit darker, 
it really depends on how much water you're using. The less water you use at the finish, so if I wanted something really bright at the end, I'm using like pure paint. This is when you're gonna get the really bright opaque colors and there won't be much of a change when you're using it like so. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I just pasted in the chat a direct link to our gouache uh, swatch or list of colors. The second link would let you download the, the file as a JPEG for a quick and easy reference. So now that I have everything down, you can kind of start to add more little details. But keep in mind where you put these details. Like I just put some here, but I don't want the line to be super hard because I'm, I don't want you looking over here. This is the main attraction. So anything we can do to lead your eye to this main attraction is gonna be helpful. So that line is pretty important. You can still kind of soften it. I'll leave this up here. So the pith of the lemon is the white of the lemon. And I find that, especially when I'm painting from life, you can see a lot of colors within this part. White tends to reflect a lot of the colors around it. So I love painting a lot of subjects with white in it. Oh yeah. So I'm pulling in some of this kind of bluish green, probably from this leaf is maybe reflecting onto it. Another reason I like to paint from life is because you don't know what the setup is around this still like. You don't know that my countertops are a dark blue, where the light is coming from, what other light sources there are. So by painting directly from life, you can really start to learn these things and um, understand them better. So I'm gonna clean off my palette real quick because I wanna start getting this table and I want it to be a nice clean white. I use a lot of paper towels. I used to use uh, these knit towels and I need to get back in that habit so I'm not wasting as much. So I'm doing a touch of this warm uh, kind of, what is it, Hansa yellow. And then just painting in pretty thick. You have to be a little bit careful. I can see that when I touched in this area, I picked up a little bit of that darker green and it's kind of getting on my painting. So. I just need to wash my brush better. go. So one way, one thing to really think about is to, in general, this is a rule that can be broken, but in general, 
If you want things to come forward, you have them be warmer, and to push them back, you have them be cooler. Another thing you can do to bring things forward is to add more contrast, to add more detail, more texture, and to kind of remove all those things as you go back. So even when it's something as close as this table, I can start with like a warmer ground and then slightly cool it as I move back just to give it a little more depth. Also, I know I'm kind of close on time. Let me know if it's getting really close and I'll speed up. They both have that. gum, Arabic. Mm -hmm. Was that a question? Sorry. <laughs> so one I'm is also opaque, one is trans. No, <laughs> sorry. It's Zoom. Um, so I'm also always thinking in compliments. So complementary colors being blue, orange, purple, yellow. Um, what is he running? Green, red. So if I'm painting and something looks a little bit too blue, I add a little bit of orange to kind of tone it down. I'm always thinking of these things. So that's what I did for this part here. And if it's a little too yellow, I add a little bit of purple. So now there was a question about whether the blue pencil dissolves or just does the opacity of the gouache just cover it? The opacity of the gouache covers it, so it doesn't dissolve. So you don't want to go too dark. Sorry, my painting, my exposure is really bright on my camera, but it's um not quite this white, <laughs> if you can imagine. I'll be posting the, the final on um, the interwebs, but you get an, a good idea anyway. Very nice. Thank you. This part's pretty important to me. These shiny rinds, they pick up the light that's underneath it, the reflective light. Oh, wow. So that'll really help separate it from the shadow and also give it a little more uh, depth. I'm softening the edge by doing a clean brush and then just kind of going along the edges here. So edges are pretty important to me. We had a question about why do you prefer your flat brushes over rounds? It's just kind of what I've always painted with. So I'm a creature of habit. Um, I should branch out a little more and try some rounds. But I like flats because you can get pretty much any brush shape that you want, uh, depending on how you hold the brush. So I'm not really missing too much by just using flats. <laughs> When I'm painting these compositions, I'm always really mindful of how it will be framed. So I try to bring all the elements a quarter of an inch in or either extend it fully out. So there's no weird tangents. Like this might be a little bit of a tangent, um, meaning that it'll just be touching the edge, which I'm not too wild about, but that's just another thing to think about. I think I'm getting close to done though. Let me know if anyone has other questions.
Thank you, Kelly's a fast painter, John. Sally says, it looks terrific. <laughs> Great. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I think you're, you are a fast painter, Heather. Um, <laughs> we have about five minutes, still have five okay. minutes left. Yeah. All right, I'll keep going. So right now I'm just looking for any little subtleties that might take it up a notch. So this this leaf here is catching a little bit of the blue from the window that's right above it. So you can see a little bit of the natural light, the blue sky. Everyone always adds a little bit of blue into their shadows, but technically it really depends on a lot of things. So on a nice bright blue sky day, you probably will see a lot of the blue in the shadows, but it really depends on what's around it and how the light is being reflected. How do you know when you're done? Mm -hmm. I know when I'm done when there's nothing more to add or to take away. So I'm always stepping back and kind of checking things in the mirror. I'm always checking my work. So some ways I do that is I check in the mirror. I'll take a photo of it. I'll step away, which is maybe the most important one, like go take a little bathroom break, take eat a little snack, even if it's just for 30 seconds. If you step away and come back, you're gonna see any major flaws. Other things I do is I flip it upside down, which is really helpful. Any way to give you a new perspective. Heather, I think just mm -hmm. have to help Ezra convey her, his or her question because his battery uh, went off just now. Um, oh. I know you talked about use of wax, but he particularly asked about Borland's wax. What's mm -hmm. your thought about it? Do you use it or what's your thought about it? I have I have tried it. I do like it. The only thing that I'm not certain about is the UV protection. And maybe that's something you all know better than me, but um, that's why I haven't really done it is I'm not sure if the painting will be really protected unless I varnish underneath it. But I do like the the look of it. I have a few paintings around here that are waxed. It looks really nice. And when you buff it, it gets a really nice uh, satin finish. Thank you. shadow in here. Make this a little bit darker. So another thing I do in gouache is I use um, kind of a glaze. I'll water down a paint. It's got to be pretty watered down and you have to be careful. Sometimes I blot my brush off a little bit and you can kind of glaze over areas if you want to push everything back a little bit. Heather, for some of those that don't know about the grid on your reference photo, would you mind expounding on that? All right, so like I was showing you with this, so I imagine a grid and then you can even draw that grid on your paper. So this is an eight by 10 format and you can use the grid that you're seeing and the grid on the paper to kind of find the shapes of your painting and get an accurate drawing down. Hopefully that made sense. For sure. Mm -hmm. 
I'm adding just a little bit of white to get a more opaque yellow. But try to use as little white as you can for these kinds of things. White will desaturate and kind of muddy up your work pretty quickly. So Heather, when you're done, can you post your final to, so we can see your final work? Yes, I will do that. It's okay. gonna be pretty much the same thing. <laughs> I'm okay. basically done. Very nice. I'm, I'm amazed how much you're able to accomplish in such a small <laughs> amount of time while talking and engaging everybody, which is pretty fabulous. <laughs> thank you very much. It's wonderful to have you. Thank um, you. I want to thank you so much. Yes. I want to thank everybody for watching today. And um, you have Heather's information. She shared her email address and her Instagram address. I see there was questions about how she does the veins and the leaves. Um, please send um, Heather a message. And uh, there's lots of questions as it comes to gouache. Heather, with that, I want to thank you very, very much. It was very kind of you to be with us today. Learned a lot, thank saw you. a lot. Thank you. Yeah. And maybe you'll join us again. There's I a request, love to. John. Thank you. John, there's a Thank request you. if you could have Heather's um, front facing cam in on spotlight before we say bye bye. Oops. Yes, of course. Okay, let's put and you on there. There we go. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> no, now you put it back again. <laughs> you have my cat Kuda in here as well. He was the one making all the noise. Good can to you, see everyone. There she Thank is. You. There we go. Thank you, Heather. Thank, right. you, John. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Heather. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. That was week. wonderful. Thanks so much. <laughs>